अच्छा अच्छा Happy Easter, and thank you for allowing us to share Easter Sunday with you. It is going to be an incredible time as we celebrate Easter together. Now, I know that Easter looks a little bit different this year, but you know what? Here's the truth. It's still the same. Jesus is risen. And I want to thank you for gathering with us. Grab the family. Get the dog. You might want to go ahead and even include the cat in this one, all right? We'll bring them to Easter service. It is great to have you gather around and worship with us today as we celebrate a risen Savior. Sing with us as you listen to these words and sing these words. It's all about the Easter story this morning. Sing out loud in your living rooms, wherever you are. Let's worship Jesus this morning. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, 
Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sin far away. Rising he justified, freely forever, one day he Despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me, dying, He saved me, buried, He carried my sins far away. of that glorious day. He is our hope today. He is our living hope. Think about these words. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation 
I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. Your work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from is full. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing it out now. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Set me free. sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. The roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Oh, Jesus, yours is the Hey, we want to say thank you for joining us this morning. He is our living hope. And there's a song, we're not singing it this morning, that says, because of his death, we ran out of that grave. He calls our name and out we come out of the grave, not because we're something special, but because he is. Because he is the one who conquered sin and conquered death for us. So therefore, when he calls your name, Man, we run out of that grave. We are so thankful that you've joined us this morning. I know that you're watching on live stream. We're thankful for that. Please interact 
with us. I know there's about 160 of you that are watching right now. If you wanna go ahead and just comment where you're watching from, let us know, is it from home? Is it from the car? Is it from the backyard? Where is it at? Let us know where that's at. Send us a picture if you don't mind. We just love to interact with you guys and see where you're watching from and what you're doing on this Easter Sunday. This morning, when I woke up, I had looked at the weather forecast the last couple of days and just had seen rain and rain and rain and rain and rain. And I got up this morning, checked the weather, said it was gonna be raining. And I walked out and I let my dog out. And as I looked out the back door, there was this beautiful sunrise there. And I, and Easter, there's just something about seeing a sunrise on Easter that makes the day just so much better. Because when Jesus rose from the dead, he was no longer the guy that promised to conquer sin and death, but was in the tomb. He was no longer the guy that just did some crazy miracles, but now was dead and where was the hope? He was the guy who rose from the dead. And Jesus, who everybody would say, this is something that is impossible, something that no one could, th- could say would happen, is now the one who makes these things possible. So if you stick around with us this morning, we're going to talk about this Jesus who makes the impossible possible. But while we do that, we encourage you to do a couple of things. Number one, sing along. You know these songs. We've done them a bunch. If you want to sing along with us and be there in your uh, living room, your couch, wherever, let the cows hear if you're in a farm, all right? Let them moo along with you. But just enjoy singing and worshiping the Lord this morning. Imagine being there and seeing Jesus alive and well, the joy with which you would worship. We want that to happen this morning for you wherever you're watching from. Secondly, Again, we want you to interact. We want to see where you're watching from. We want to talk with you. If we don't get to all of you, that's okay. We just want to see where you're at and uh, hear your prayer requests and those types of things. So please keep chatting with us. There's nothing that you're going to say in chatting on there that is, uh, is going to bother us as far as just the taking up space. All right, chat with us and we'll have a good time. And number three, we want you to listen all the way through. There's this tendency when we have an electronic device in our hand that we're watching and all of a sudden, bloop, there's a notification at the top, right? This person liked this or this person commented on this and you think to yourself, oh, who was it? And so we click on it and all of a sudden we're no longer active in a Easter service. We're now active on Facebook or on Instagram, on Snapchat, Twitter, whatever, but we're not active in the Easter service. So hang with us, stay all the way through the service. I, I promise you, God will work through it and God will bless, and he is going to give you something this morning that seemed impossible. But he's Jesus, right? So he makes the impossible possible. So let's pray, and then we'll get some more worship in, all right? Father, we are grateful this morning for who you are. Man, if we could just, if we could go back and be there on the morning when the tomb was empty, oh God, how we would live our lives Today And I know that today, Easter, is one of those holidays that everybody is watching and everybody went to church and all those different things. And sometimes in the midst of the flowery dresses, the eggs, and the bright colors, we can miss the fact that this is your resurrection day. That this is the day when something that was never done before was finished. When Satan's head was crushed, when you rose victorious over sin and over death. And sometimes, God, we can get lost in the fact of all the other things about Easter without ever thinking about the fact that today is what truly gives us freedom, that you are our hope. It's not our bank account. It's not our washed hands. It's not our flowery masks. You are are our hope. So this morning, Father, would your hope well up inside of us like never before? Would we end this service with the thought process that we follow this Jesus who makes the impossible possible, and so the things that look impossible in our lives are no longer that because we know the one who rose from the grave. We love you, and Father, we desperately need you today. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Let's worship together. That same power that happened that morning that Jesus rose again is available to us right now, right here. So sing this out from the heart this morning.
I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake, lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same There is nothing we can do. Yes, we know there are greater things in store. We will not be overtaken. We will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same. tells the story in full. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing. Love so amazing. Sing it out now. Jesus, Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. from heaven 
Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and Living with uncertainty can take its toll. The normal day-to-day is replaced with fear, worry, doubt. When our normal is disrupted, our surroundings begin to feel weak. Foundations begin to rattle. Our lives become disoriented. As time goes on, we begin to lose sight of the one constant on our journey. Jesus. The fear is consuming, the worry draining, the doubt painful. Even in our darkest moments, when the last thread of hope has unraveled from our being, we must dwell on truth. We must remember, no matter what is happening around us, God is still sovereign. Today, let us dwell on the truth of Easter. The stone has been rolled away. The grave has been rendered powerless. Death has transformed to life. In our fear, He is still risen. In our worry, He is still victorious. In our doubt, He is still alive. When everything seems hopeless, the hope of Easter remains. Easter certainly looks a little bit different today. 
You know, we've got questions in our mind, and there's a lot of things that we don't understand. We're trying to control the chaos that's going on around us, and maybe even trying to control some of that chaos that's going on inside of us. We've got questions that remain unanswered, and we would like to find an answer that would give us hope. You know, honestly, we feel like it's really different today, but I'm not so certain that it's all that different than that first Easter that first resurrection morning. You see, the Bible tells us in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John that early on that first resurrection Sunday, the disciples, some of the early followers of Christ, they went to the tomb and they went to give Jesus a proper burial. And in the midst of going to the tomb, they had questions in their mind. There was anxieties, there was cares, there was uncertainties. They wanted answers, but more than anything, they wanted hope. You know, I'm pretty certain that they felt like it was impossible at that moment. Let me ask you something. Do you ever feel like something's impossible. Maybe right now you're facing a situation and a circumstance that you would just say, look, it's really kind of impossible for me. Right now I'm, I'm dealing with uncertainties in a relationship. Maybe right now I'm dealing with uncertainties on the job. I'm dealing with uncertainties with my, my financial pressure. It's just mounting. Being at home, right? It, it's, it's different. We're, we're working from home. We're educating from home. There's a lot of things coming at us all at once, and right now, you're facing some things undoubtedly where you say, look, this is completely impossible. Is hope possible? Is an answer to my lingering question possible? Could I find an answer? Could I find hope? Could I find something that would take away yesterday and give me a better future? Is that possible? Well, here's what the Bible tells us in Mark chapter 16. You see, on Easter, here's what I want you to remember, that no matter where you are and no matter what is taking place, Easter is a moment that marks where Jesus makes the impossible possible. What does that mean for you and what does it mean for me? It means that no matter what we're facing, no matter what odds they might be, no matter what we're up against, no matter what obstacle, what barrier we're dealing with, here's what happens on Easter. Here's what happens as a result of the resurrection. You see, Jesus makes the impossible possible. Let's read it in Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, here's, here's what we find. It says this, now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. You see, they weren't expecting when they got to the tomb that Jesus would be resurrected. Here's what they were expecting. They were expecting to give Jesus a proper burial. Why? Because someone rising from the dead, that would just be impossible, right? That's not possible, but here's what we're going to discover, that Jesus makes the impossible possible. We read on in verse number two, it says, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. Imagine that. They're, they're just kind of walking through life, if you will. They're, they're trying to figure some things out, and all of a sudden, in the midst of everything they're trying to figure out, in the midst of everything that they're dealing with, here's what happens. What they had expected to see is not what they're going to see. The sun is coming up. They've got questions in their mind, according to verse number three. It says, and when they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Why did they, why did they have that? Why was that anxiety, that care, eating them up on the inside? Why was it taking place because that stone was bigger than they were and they wanted to do something but there was an obstacle in their way there was something that's bigger than they were that was causing them to feel hopeless it was causing them to feel as if there was no answer and there's nothing they could do and how would they respond I'm quite certain that maybe right now some of us have some some things in our life that feel bigger than we are we've got some obstacles we, we've got some things that we're struggling with and we're asking ourselves, how am I going to get around that obstacle? Remember just a moment ago, I asked you what you were facing that felt impossible to you and feels impossible for you? Maybe that's your obstacle. 
And maybe that's the, the moment that you're saying, Jesus, how am I going to get around this? Or, or maybe you're not even a believer in Jesus and you just got a question and you're searching for hope to get around that obstacle, maybe to get around that grief, that despair, that sense of loneliness, that financial outcome that just looks so bleak right now, replacing that job that was once good but now is gone. There's, there's questions, there's obstacles, and you're saying, who's going to take care of it? Well, they continue, and it says in verse number four, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Not only did they see that, it says it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. They were afraid. They're scared. They don't really know what's going on. But here's what it says in verse number six. It says, but he said to them, do not be alarmed. Do not be afraid. Don't, don't be uncertain. Don't be scared. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. It's a little different than what you thought. It's a little different than what you expected. It says, come see the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. You know, it's pretty amazing to stop and think about this journey in the midst of the journey that they've been on, they've followed Jesus, they've, they've given their hopes and dreams to him, and, and they placed everything on him, and now on Friday, they, they were able to see that he was crucified. They, they were able to see in the midst of their life that their hopes and dreams were, were taken from them, and on Friday, they stood there and they wept, and on Saturday, it probably seemed like an eternity for them. They're waiting and wondering what's going to happen next Yet in the midst of that waiting and wondering, they made a plan and said, this is how we're going to deal with it. We're going to go and we're going to give him a, a proper burial. But in the midst of their plan, there's still an obstacle. That obstacle is who's going to move the stone for us? Who's going to take care of it? Maybe today we've got a plan together, but there's still something that's bigger than we are. When the early followers of Christ were on their way to the tomb that first Easter morning. Here's what Jesus did for them that he'll do for you and I right now today. You see, Jesus was able to do something for them that we need often in life. When it comes to Jesus making the impossible possible, here's what Jesus did. Jesus allows them to get a new perspective. You know what Jesus does for you and he does for me and he did for those early disciples? What does he do that's impossible, that's, that's possible because of him? He offers a new perspective. You see, just a few days before, they watched their, the one that they believed was their savior die. They, they watched him hang on the cross. They watched him be placed in, in a tomb. They knew that he was dead, yet they needed a new perspective. And in the midst of their uncertainty, in the midst of their struggles, in the midst of their pain, in the midst of, of all they had done, they're saying, is there any purpose in this? Is there any way to get through it? All they could see everywhere they looked, they were, they were looking at a message in their mind that said there is no hope anymore. But here's a truth that they were able to see. You see, now they could see Romans chapter 5 and verse Number six says, for when they were still without strength, and we were without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can I tell you something? That's a verse that gives me a new perspective in my life. And without the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus, I can't have that new perspective. And, and the disciples were able to see that not only did he die for us, but he rose again. He rose again so that we could have new life. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 24, it says, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we having died to sins might live 
for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. You know, Jesus gives us a new perspective, a new purpose. His death, his burial, his resurrection. On that day when they walk to the tomb and they're expecting to see the stone there and they're hoping that a Roman soldier or someone would help them and allow them to roll that stone away from the tomb. When they get there, here's what takes place. They get a new perspective. You see, sometimes people think that Jesus moved the stone so that he could get out. And the truth is this. It's, it's well stated and, and understood as this, that Jesus didn't move the stone so that he could get out. He moved the stone so that they could see in, so that you and I could get a new perspective, so that they could get a perspective that our greatest enemy, our greatest struggle in life was overcome. You see, he died for us while there was nothing good about us. And here's a reality in this life that we need to understand. No matter who we are, no matter what's going on, He offers us a new perspective. You see, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. But on that day, Jesus came out of the tomb and the angel said, look at where they had laid him. He is not here. He has risen. They were able to walk in and gain a new perspective. You see, they thought that there was no purpose in their pain. They thought that there was no hope beyond that moment, but when they come in, what do they see? They see a new perspective. And right now, maybe you have questions that you need answered. Maybe you're seeing everywhere you look, you you look over here and and it's hopelessness, and you look right here and it's hopelessness, and you and you take a look over here and it's hopelessness. But but here's the reality: when we step back and we look at Jesus and we see him taking care of what was impossible, and he makes it possible for a resurrection here's the reality that new perspective wow it changes our life and can I tell you something I want you to know that when we feel like there's no purpose in life God's up to something when life seems to be at its worst it's often at that moment where God is at his best And when they were walking up, wondering if there was any hope, when they saw the stone was rolled away, and the angel invited him in and said, take a look at this. God is at work. God is up to something. Right now, I want you to know that in your life and in my life, God is at work and God is up to something. Even though we don't understand it, even though Easter looks different, can I tell you something? The empty tomb gives us a new perspective on life. Why? Because the empty tomb allows my life and your life to be different. We have something more than the moment to live for. We have something far greater than we could ever hope or dream of on our own to live for. We have one who gives us a new perspective. Today, when you step away from all the chaos, when you try and gain an understanding, understand this. God is at work. The tomb is still empty. And early on that day, when they came, the angel said, come and look. Come and get a new perspective on life. One who loved you, gave his life for you. And not only did he give his life for you, he took his life up again. And he walked out so that you could see in that life can be different with Jesus. He makes the impossible possible. But you know, it doesn't stop there. When you stop and take a look at Jesus, here's one of the things that he does. His resurrection. His resurrection removes our greatest obstacles. Let me ask you this question right now. What's your greatest fear in life? What's your greatest care? What's your greatest concern? What's your greatest struggle? For the disciples, those early followers of Jesus, on that first resurrection morning, do you know what their greatest care was? Who will roll the stone away for us? That was their greatest care. That was their greatest concern. They said, we've got an obstacle. We want to do the right thing for Jesus, but there's something in our way. You know, my greatest obstacle and your greatest obstacle In this life is sin, it's death. But the Bible says that because Jesus died and that he rose again, that obstacle is taken care of. 
through his sacrifice, through his one-time death where, where he gave his life. But think about this. Even if we know Jesus, even if he's our Savior, there's always some cares and some anxieties. There's some fears that are, are very real. Oh, you'll meet people right now that'll, that'll say, look, I'm not afraid of this coronavirus. Well, maybe you're not afraid of the coronavirus, but let me ask you this. Are you afraid of your bank account being empty, losing your car, losing your home? You afraid of that 401k falling out from underneath of you and working until you're 95? Maybe, maybe that doesn't bother you. Maybe it's a, a loved one that's, that's getting sick and, and there's some uncertainty there. Maybe it's just a sense of, of hopelessness. You see, there's a lot of cares going on right now uh, amidst a crisis, uh, amidst a struggle. One of the things that, that we're seeing is addiction rate is, is going up. Why? Because there's a care, there's an anxiety that's eating at someone. We're, we're seeing domestic calls go up. Why? Because people are home more and there's, there's agitation and irritation and, and, and there's frustration that's taking place at a, a new level. Why? Because the pressure is coming in and people have cares and anxieties on them. And we're saying, who is going to move? this stone for me I'm hopeless I'm helpless it's bigger than I am do you know what happened the ladies the followers of Christ that were walking asking this question that was gnawing at them the one question that they couldn't get by who's going to move the stone for us who's going to intervene who's going to make a difference do you know what happened when they got there when they lifted their head up when they quit looking at themselves, when they quit looking and concentrating on all the circumstances that were taking their attention, and they looked up, the stone was already moved. Do you know that Jesus has already moved the greatest stone, the greatest barrier that keeps us from God? That's your sin, that's my sin. But not only has he already moved that greatest barrier, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 7 that we can cast all of our cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. You see, on the cross, Jesus didn't just hang there and take my sin and your sin. When he rose from the tomb and he came out victorious and they said, look in, he's not here. See the place where he has laid him. Go and tell his disciples you see, when they said all of those things, here's the truth. Here's the reality. Jesus was taking the greatest cares that you have going on right now, your greatest anxieties, your greatest concerns, and Jesus was making the impossible possible. He was making it possible for you to overcome them, not on your own, but with his help. You see, Easter is a day where we celebrate the resurrection and in the resurrection of Jesus, here's what he does. He removes our greatest obstacles, our greatest barriers, our greatest struggles when we come to him. You know, there's another truth that comes from the resurrection on this Easter Sunday. This day we celebrate. One of those truths is, is this, and I'm so thankful for it, is he doesn't let our past define our future. You see, just a few days before Jesus had been crucified, he had been buried, and those early Christ followers returned to the tomb. Why? Because on Friday, that's where he was placed. Do you know what we learn from Easter Sunday? That Friday doesn't control Sunday. That your past doesn't have to define your future. And for the disciples, in, in Mark chapter 16, they, they come to the tomb. Why? Because that's where Jesus had been laid. They, they came there. Why? Because on Friday, that's what they had experienced. And they came there because they had known that he was placed there and, and he had had a, a partial burial and now they were coming to do it properly. Why? Because that's where they had been. Do you know Jesus makes it possible for your past not to define your future? You see, he makes forgiveness possible for anything and everyone through his death on the cross, through his burial, and through his resurrection. Somebody would say, John, I'm, I'm not so certain about that. Well, here's a, a truth. Jesus leaves a message with the angel and says, you seek 
Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter. Why did he say and Peter? Because Peter denied him. Peter said, look, Jesus, I'm always going to be with you. And Jesus said, Peter, there's coming a day where you're going to deny me. You're going to betray me. You're going to walk away. But in this passage, we see this. Even Peter, who had followed Jesus but denied him, Jesus made sure, hey, I want you to go, and I even want you to tell Peter, and I want you to tell Peter that he is invited. Why? Because Peter is forgiven. In John chapter 21, we see a conversation in verse number 15. It flows down through verse number 19, and Jesus looks at Peter, and he says, Peter, do you love me? P Peter, are you interested in loving me? Do, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, I love you. And Jesus says, feed my lambs. He asks him again, and Peter says, yes, you know I love you. They have this back and forth conversation. In the midst of a back and forth conversation, here's what happens in that conversation. Jesus said, Peter, if you love me, then I want you to follow me. Do you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was telling Peter, all is forgiven. Some of us today question our past and we wonder if God could forgive us. If God truly loves us. A few moments ago, I shared a verse from Romans chapter five. And it just simply sums up this way. While we were still Sinners, Christ died for us. When there was nothing good about us, he died for us. He's not concerned about your past. He's concerned about your future, and he has something for you. You see, we're looking for hope. And sometimes we go to our past and we think because of our past and our experience that there is no hope. But here's the reality. There is hope for you because Jesus makes the impossible possible. And some of you have been taught that because of your past, maybe God doesn't love you. Or maybe you're, you're a Christian, you're a follower of Christ, but you've got some things in your past and, and you think because of some sins and mistakes and some failures along the way that God couldn't use you and God doesn't love you and maybe he doesn't have a, a plan for you. But here's the reality. Jesus makes the impossible possible. Your past doesn't define your future. Here's what defines your future your relationship with him, his power to overcome death, hell, and the grave, his power to walk out of the grave on that third day. You see, that defines your future. That means with Jesus, your future has no limits. Today, I want to encourage you to look past your past because Jesus has already taken care of it. If you'll come to him, if you have come to him, he has an incredible future for you. Tucked away in this passage is this truth that in the darkest of times, he offers a message of hope. He offers a message of hope in the darkest of times. You see, for the disciples they had just witnessed his death, they had just witnessed his burial, and it seemed like there couldn't be hope to be found anywhere, and when they go, they're asking the question, is there hope? Who's going to move the stone? Who's going to take care of this? Who's going to take care of that? How can we go forward from here? And all of a sudden, when they look up, it's taken care of. Their worries are taken care of. They go, and they find out, look, he was laid here, but now he's not anymore. He's taken care of it. Don't keep going back to the past because it's not there anymore. It's taken care of. It's removed. But he said this, he's not here. He's risen. Go and tell. Go and tell his disciples and Peter. Do you know what I've discovered? People need a message of hope. People need a message of hope 24-7, 365. But right now, more than ever, people need a message of hope that tells us in the midst of the corona crisis, Jesus makes the impossible possible, that we can get through it. He lets us know that while science is at work and while doctors are working overtime and people on the front lines are there doing incredible things and we need to pray for them and we need to support them, he tells us this truth that as good as they are and as much as being accomplished ultimately for the individual, no matter who we are, our hope lies in Christ and people need that 
message of hope. They need to know that life can be better than it is right now. And maybe today you're a follower of Jesus and you need to share that message of hope with others. Can you imagine being the one that left the grave and went and began to tell? The Bible says in this passage they were so afraid that they didn't say anything to anyone until they got back to where some of them are. And people said, what's wrong with you? And they had to drag, them, drag it out of them. You see, sometimes as believers, as someone who might have a little hope, we're, we're afraid to share a little hope with others because, because of what they might say, how they might react. Can, can I tell you something? People need hope. I want to encourage you just to think of a a few people that need hope that you can share it with. And today, if you don't know Christ, I want you to know that there is hope. There is hope for you. You see, there's a message of hope that's very powerful. But when we look at what Jesus gives us, he tells us this truth, that he always keeps his word. He always keeps his word. Think about this for for just a a moment. In Mark chapter 16 and verse number 6, the angel says, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. See the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. He rolls back the clock and he says, you remember when Jesus told you that the Son of Man must be crucified and buried and three days later he'll rise again? You remember that moment when he said that? Here's here's the truth. He always keeps his word. When you stop and, and, and look at our life, It's often impossible for for you and I to always keep our word. Uh, We we might try to do that, but but here's the, the reality. Promise after promise all throughout the Bible, here's what you discover. God always keeps his word. Time after time when Jesus said something was going to take place, he always kept his word. And in a moment of our life where we feel like we're dealing with some impossible situations, can I tell you something? Jesus makes it possible because he always keeps his word. He told his disciples, you may not understand it, but I'm going to be crucified, I'm going to be buried, and on the third day, I will rise again. You know what? He did it. Why? Because he always keeps his word. Jesus has said, cast all your cares upon me. Why? Because I care for you. He says, come unto me all who are tired, who are worn out, and I will give you rest. He says, whoever calls upon me, I will save. You know what? He always keeps his word. And in Hebrews chapter 13, here's what it says. It says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still keeps his word. You see, Jesus, he makes the impossible possible. He makes salvation possible for you. He makes salvation possible for me. And right now on this Easter Sunday, maybe you're thinking, look, I'm not certain that I know Jesus as my Savior. Well, can I tell you something? He said he would save you if you would call out to him. And he'll do it because he always keeps his word. You see, Jesus went to the cross. He paid for your sin and for my sin, the sin of the world. He was buried and he rose again. And because he was buried and rose again on the third day, because he died for your sins and he has victory over the grave, he is the Savior that you need. Today, I want to invite you, the best you know how to place your faith and trust in him. If you'll call out to him just like this, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner and I need a savior. Would you please forgive me of my sins? Would you please be my savior? I promise you this, he will keep his word. He will save you. He makes the impossible possible. You see, my salvation, your salvation on your own, trying to get there another way, trying to get to heaven by being good enough, no, it's not possible. 
Jesus came and he offered his life for you and for me, and he rose from the grave. And that's what Easter Sunday is all about, making the impossible possible. If you'll invite him to be your savior today, he will do it. I hope that you will. In fact, right now, if you need to invite him to do it, do it. Right now, Jesus, forgive me, and please be my savior. Maybe today, you say, John, I've already done that. I've already trusted Jesus as my savior. Maybe today, you need to be reminded that he'll remove your greatest obstacle. You see, whether we know him as our savior or not, he'll remove our greatest obstacle. What is your obstacle that you need removed? What is that barrier that's holding you back? That stone that's in place that you can't see past. You see, Jesus moved the stone to give them a new perspective. And if we'll just look at him, we'll gain a new perspective and know that he can move the stone. And maybe he already has moved the stone. We just need to trust him in it. Maybe today you're struggling to get past your past. He doesn't let your past define your future. He's got an incredible plan for your life. Would you let him help you? Would you let him give you that future? Maybe today you need to share the message of hope with those around you. He told him to go and tell. Today, I would encourage you to tell someone that Jesus is alive, that Jesus is risen. And I would encourage you to remember this, that he makes the impossible possible because he always keeps his word. He will be with you. So today, what's your next step? Through Jesus, it's possible. Whether it's salvation, whether you need to be baptized, whether you need to start reading your Bible, whether it's to start praying, whether it's to start sharing your faith, Jesus makes what we think is impossible possible. Would you turn to him today? Pray with me, please. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for who you are. We thank you for those who have responded to you, those who have made a commitment to you today in some way. Lord, I pray that you would help us all to know that you do make the impossible possible. And Father, whatever you have for us, help us to know that you keep your word and we can trust you and we can look to you. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your risen son and a resurrected savior. For it's in Christ's name, amen. Well, I wanna thank you for joining us for Easter celebration and I want you to know that while Easter looks a little different this year, Jesus still makes the impossible possible. Thank you for watching. I want to encourage you to invite some friends and family to watch throughout our times today. And I want to encourage you to join us tomorrow for Monday on Mission. We'll be live tomorrow and, and talking about Monday on Mission. We do that at noon, uh, just a way for us to share our faith throughout the week and the circumstances we face. Come back on Wednesday night for Harmony at Home, uh, and, and we're going to be doing a, a Bible study and just having some conversation about some things in life, and, and we may even have a special guest on Wednesday that'll bring some smiles to your face. I, I promise you that. Uh, you will love it, but we want to encourage you to be a part of it. I want to thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. Our church family, the community, has been incredible. And uh, this is an excellent time to remember to give online if you're a part of Harmony, or you can mail that in. We thank you for your faithfulness in that area. If you are a part of another church family uh, and you're just watching today, don't feel any pressure to give. In fact, I would encourage you to give to your church and, and, and be a faithful supporter of that ministry as, as God continues to take that forward. An excellent opportunity to demonstrate faithfulness there. Thank you for being a part of Easter at Harmony and join us throughout the week. Come back next Sunday as we continue the series, Jesus Makes the Impossible Possible. Have a great Easter.